and what was underneath was extremely ugly and uh, horrifying. So a little while back, I realized that I needed a McLaren in my life. And McLaren had been this car company that I always revered because McLaren F1 was my favorite car just as well as it was a lot of people's favorite cars. I couldn't afford a McLaren F1 because those cars are $20 million now. Now my second favorite McLaren is the P1. And the P1 is also an unobtainium car and that is many millions of dollars. I couldn't afford that. But the third favorite McLaren was a 675 LT. And while that car right now is around 225 dollars to $250,000 on the used market, there was one that I perhaps could afford. And that was one that had been crashed in the front and back and had been going through various salvage auctions for the past three years. It was a 2016 Delta Red McLaren 675 LT. And this was, one of those cars that you see on eBay or uh, Auto Trader or something, and it's like they have a easy fix in the description. Oh, it just needs a fender and a bumper and you'll be fine. It didn't run and drive, but it was probably because of a battery. The AC just needs to be recharged, that sort of thing. Really easy to work on, really easy to repair. Turns out that's not the case. So I bought a 675 LT uh, for $80,000, which is a big discount from what they are used, but there's a reason for that because this car had frame damage in the front and the back. It had engine damage, it had cosmetic damage, has a whole lot of cosmetic damage, and boy are those parts not cheap, and boy are those parts not easy to find. The 675 LT, for those that don't know, is basically a 650S with every little bit being a little bit better. It was our track focused, mostly carbon fiber body with more power, less weight. It was the send off to that chassis. The MP412C 650S ended in the 675 LT. That was the top version and the last version before they went to the 720. I really loved the look of that car. I loved the lines. I thought it was a very, very good design. And I loved the back end because it was a little bit wider than the 650S and it had a proprietary rear end with a big wing. I mean, they called it an LT for a long tail. It was only, I think like two inches longer, but ask any woman, two inches makes a difference. So if you look at the car from a design perspective, it was exactly the same as a 650S. However, if you look at the car when you're actually trying to buy parts, that was a completely different thing. The 675 LT, they only made 500 in the world, 500 coupes and then 500 spiders. So you have a really rare car on your hands and when you have as much damage as you had on mine, you start to run into issues. So before I got into the project, I was looking at this car for years. At first it went up for auction about three years ago and it went up for auction and it sold for $126,000, which was good money three years ago. I mean, the car would have been almost new. And then it went up for auction again and it sold for $100,000, then it sold for 90, then it sold for 80, then it sold for 80 again to me. And the reason why it sold so many times is because People thought that this car just needed bumpers, maybe an alignment, maybe some new wheels, and maybe some cosmetic repairs, and then it would be good to sell to the, the next unsuspecting buyer. But that's not the case. This car needed a lot of structural components, not only structural in the metal in the front and back, but the carbon tub. And the, car the carbon tub is a expensive component and not something that you could fix easily. Well, not traditionally. So when I got this car, I had to take everything apart. I took off all the uh, carbon fenders, the, uh, the rear quarter panels, the front end, the rear end, and it allowed me to see what was actually underneath and what was underneath was extremely ugly and uh, horrifying. So the way this car became so damaged was back in 2017, this car went across a few lanes in Chicago on an October night and then it went into a tree backwards and then it rode up onto the curb which destroyed the bumper and also destroyed part of the suspension because this suspension has this really high strong high pressure system and one of the accumulators on top of the strut exploded. 
that must have been scary. Uh, uh, 2,000 PSI just exploding right in front of you and it ripped apart part of the front fender. So when I got the car all taken apart, I realized that the rear subframe, the, uh, the essentially the rear frame that holds the engine in place, that was just twisted in. So it was narrower than it should have been. And it also was like kind of off kilter. So the wheels weren't exactly where you left them uh, from the factory. And in the front, I thought that everything was okay. I thought that it was only body damage. You know, you get, get a new front bumper. Not so, because the subframe on one end was a quarter inch higher than the other end. So I needed a new subframe, I needed a new rear frame, and the engine had been punted by that tree, had been ripped off its mounts and punted into the gas tank, and that caused damage to the engine mounting, that caused damage to the turbo, that caused damage to the gas tank. Everything needed rebuilding. So. From that point, I decided that this car is gonna get taken down to its last nut and bolt. This is gonna be a rebuild like you would get at a McLaren factory if this thing was new. So I decided to take it down to the carbon tub, which meant taking out the engine, engine comes out through the bottom, taking out the subframe, the subframe just comes out with six bolts from the carbon tub, the subframe at the front, which involves taking out all the steering components, uh, taking out the brakes, the suspension, all that stuff, and then hopefully remembering how it all goes back together at the end. I also took out the doors. One of the doors was completely messed up and taking out the roof. And fun fact, the roof, the doors, the quarter panels, all that stuff is glued on from McLaren. It's not bolted on, it is glued on. You just need a heat gun and like a little spatula or a butter knife and you can take the entire car apart. It takes a very long time and it's very itchy. You're gonna need gloves. I didn't use gloves because I'm a smart person and it is something that you can definitely do. The jury is definitely out on whether I can realign it when it has to go back together, but I think it's, if McLaren could do it, I could do it. Now I took off the roof for another reason, because I want to have a car that's a little bit more, uh, let, let's say unique. I want a car that doesn't look like every other 675LT out there, especially not in America. So I bought a roof that has a roof scoop in it that was brand new from McLaren. Now McLaren would charge $40,000 for this roof panel. It is this beautiful like herringbone carbon fiber and it's one piece. It basically, it glues on into place. It's, it's really easy to install. It is the last roof scoop roof in the world and it was bought by somebody that was gonna put it on their car but ended up not doing it. So I got that guy to sell me it. Uh, it I didn't pay $40,000 but it also wasn't, wasn't cheap, but I figured if I'm gonna do a McLaren 675 LT, I'm gonna do it my way. So that is on its way here from the UK. So I can put that together. I can put the quarter panels together. I'm gonna paint it in a color that uh, I want. Uh, it's not gonna be a McLaren color because fun fact, McLaren doesn't allow you to buy their colors. They have to sell it to you for a very large markup and their colors are just trash. Their, uh, their paint work is garbage, but this car is gonna have uh, custom wheels. It's gonna have a custom exhaust. I love the look of the 600 LT with the exhaust going at the top. So I'm thinking of doing maybe a custom exhaust that goes both out the top and the back with a valve in between them. So if I wanna do party mode and have exhaust spitting flames out the top and perhaps lighting my car on fire, I can do that. Uh, also, I want wheels that look like the McLaren F1 LM. I love those five spoke, like thick wheels. This is a car that I never thought I can afford in a million years. I've been watching people like uh, Shmi 150 with his McLaren 675LT and I'm just like dreaming to myself, wouldn't it be nice if I had one? And now I have the chance to really like put one together from the ground up, knowing every nut and bolt was put in at least as good as I could put it in. And I'll have a car, hopefully, that works as well as it did stock. We'd like to thank Avalon King for their continued support of the VinWiki YouTube channel. I have their Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating on all my cars, and I love it. The increased shine, the reflectivity, the ease of cleaning, and the protection of the paint all make it a tremendous thing to add value and protection to your car. You can check it out at the link in the description below, and we're gonna to continue to experiment and do interesting projects like the S55, which hopefully at some point soon, will get to be shot off the cliff to see if it protects your car in the event of an accident. Well, that's cute, Ed. I'm over here at Genius Garage with Avalon King building a V12 supercar from scratch. <laughs> yeah, we're way past ceramic coatings now, buddy. 
Okay, well, we'll hear more from Casey about the King Zero project later this month. But again, thank you to Avalon King for supporting the channel. Check them out in the link in the description below.